Let's discuss apicoectomy of the mesial buccal root of a maxillary first molar. If you want to see a library of apicoectomies and different types of surgeries, subscribe to dentistrymasterclasses.com. There's a link in the description below. You'll remember if you're performing an apicoectomy on a maxillary first molar, normally you only perform apicoectomies on the facial roots. It's too hard to get to the palatal root. If the palatal root is the problem, you either got to redo the endodontics if possible or extract the tooth and place an implant. So in this case, you can see this patient had an old endodontic procedure and was having discomfort from the tooth. And you can see the infection here on the mesial buccal root. So I'm performing and, and see it's just it's slightly filled. They were not able to enter that root. So I'm going to perform an apicoectomy with bone graft and retrofill of the mesial buccal root. This is the palatal root and this is the distal root, distal buccal root, and those are fine. And here's the final restoration. You can see the root curving over here and there's the retrofill. So the first thing I'm going to do is measure the length of the root I'm performing the apicoectomy on from the margin of the crown. And you can see that's about nine and a half millimeters. That orients me so I'm not just working blind. I know that's about the length where I want to be making my ostectomy. This is a 15 barred Parker making, and this is a semi-lunar incision from the unattached non-keratinized gingiva into the keratinized gingiva. If possible, you want to make the incision in keratinized gingiva because the, the uh, sutured flap is more stable. See, it's just semi-lunar full thickness flap all the way to bone. This is the periosteal elevator. And now I'm measuring with my periodontal probe from the margin of the crown to the approximate location of the tip of this mesial buccal root. And that's about nine and a half, 10 millimeters. And this is a high speed number four round burr on a, with a long shank. Now to be sure I'm in the right location, I'm taking a little piece of gutta percha, this is a hot tip, and I'm gonna place it in that, uh, that beginning ostectomy and take a radiograph. And you can see there's the root and there's the gutta percha cone. So I know the root is right there in relation to the gutta percha cone. Sometimes the roots are not directly apical to the crown of the tooth, and you want to be sure you're performing your, your osteotomy in the right location. See, I'm, remo I'm removing that, and I know I'm in the right location. And you can see here's the root. You can see the, gutta, the old gutta percha down there, and there's the root of the tooth. And now I'm just cutting off the root of the tooth. You remember that? root was just partially filled. I'm just very lightly cutting the root of the tooth and now I'm curetting any granulation tissue with this small spoon. Now when you make this cut, when you sever the root tip, you want to be sure it's angled like the cut's angled like this, not like this because you can't retrofill easily a root that's cut like that perpendicular to the root. You want the cut to be angled so you can retrofill it. Curating any granulation tissue, you can see my angled cut right here. And this is a tiny round burr. This is about a number one round burr to make a slight divot in the tip of that t apical part of that root, and that's where you're going to retrofill it, where you're going to place the retrofill. Now sometimes these roots will be into the sinus. Don't worry about that if it happens. You know, many first molar teeth that are extracted have roots in the sinus and you have an oral antral communication. In those cases, you just want to place the patient on antibiotics, a decongestant, and an antihistamine and a nose spray for about a month and tell them don't blow their nose for about a month or two. But it's a common thing. I'm just cleaning that real well with chlorhexidine. The hardest part of this is keeping it, keeping, uh, controlling the uh, bleeding so you can place the retrofill material. 
I'm suctioning, I'm placing a cotton ball for a minute just to control it. And here's my BC uh, RRM endo sequence. You can, you can fill the root, the apical part of the root with IRM. This is just root sealer. And this is a good material. Cleaning that, flattening it, letting that set for a minute. Then we're going to bone graft this with a freeze-dried bone. And this is Maxius freeze-dried bone. I like that real well. You can use biowash. That's another good material. And this is number 12, Bard Parker. And I'm just undermining the coronal part of the incision. If you don't, it's very difficult to suture that. And then this is a contour adapt resorbable collagen membrane. Now I'm trimming that. I like to cut the corners off. It's just easier to place. Placing that over the bone graft and being sure my flap is free. And this is 4-0 gut suture. And see, because I've undermined the coronal part of the flap, it's easy to suture underneath there. If this is attached to the gingiva, it's very difficult to place the suture under the flap or under the gingival tissue. So we place five stitches here and that will heal nicely. See here's the apical ectomy with retrofill. And that's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time.